Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about the part control systems and how they affect your mech in Armored Core. This is also valid for pretty much all the games in the series. The models vary, they differ between game to game, but you can pretty much uh, rely on their existing different fire control systems and they are mostly divided in the type of reticle they have. You can, um, the button also varies. Um, there's a standard reticle, there's wide and shallow, there is wide uh, lock type, and there are uh, narrow and deep. These refer, and uh, there's also vertical one, uh, that's one of the names they use. It's either tall or vertical, and instead of wide, it's horizontal. So let's look first at the standard one. Uh, in the first Armored Core game, the uh, distance at which the fire control system activates mostly depends on the weapon that you have equipped. Like, uh, weapons with a very short range um, activate at a shorter distance than, for example, a sniper rifle or a back cannon. You start with a, a standard type of FSC, FCS, excuse me, and then you can buy another one. It has uh, different stats, uh, weight, how much the, the part weights, how much energy it takes from your generator uh, while it's in use and this is permanent it's always draining a different amount of, of energy and maximum lock maximum lock refers to how many targets you can get a red lock and we are going to be talking about this i'm going to change to this was this one to the comdex go so not a bad fcs uh, but it's mostly useful or FC FCSs that have multiple lock-ons are mostly used for missiles. Missile arms or missile base on the back of your character. Everything else, the sword and the right hand weapon, uh, they only activate once. So let's go into the AC test. So you can check what a standard uh, reticle looks like. Now, this, the actual size of the reticle Engaging. also depends on the weapon you have to equip. For example, this one is medium range because the rifle has decent amount of range, but the reticle is kind of small. So using this as a short distance is not very helpful because it's very easy to lose track of your opponent. Okay, so let's go back to the assembly line. And let me um, deactivate the short, the short lock on time accessory. Uh, you get, uh, playing one of the missions, you are going to get what is called an optional part, the SP Axle, that you can install on your core. This reduces the lock on time. So we're going to be uh, checking the fire control systems without this enabled because they give different lock on times. Now. This one is four maximum lock. This one is six maximum lock. The lock type is standard. So that's a perfectly square reticle that is available to you. It is going to change sizes depending on the weapon that you have to equip. The, I don't have a multi launcher so I don't benefit from having six lock-ons because it can only shoot one missile. 
but the reticle is fairly large and it's kind of easy to get the lock on now if you notice first it's acquiring the target and if your enemy goes out of the reticle let me kill one of these guys because they're pain in the butt to deal with when there are two of them and it's and it's very hard to explain so i don't know if you can listen but there is computer noises whenever you put the reticle on an enemy and it starts like a green aim and then it slowly changes to an actual uh, red reticle and it says lock later games it will say something like acquiring target or locking on and then changes to lock and then it changes to full lock on if you fire your weapon before target the, the actual targeting system gives you a red reticle, you are going to miss because the computer inside the core needs time to calculate the trajectory and the speed of the enemy you are trying to hit. Okay, so let me see if I have another weapon. That is not uh, not this also narrow and deep. So let's see if I can buy one of the starting rifles because those need a lot more time to actually get a lock on. Like okay, yeah, this one. It's still the same fire control system as before, but now we have a machine gun installed i think I, I think i didn't change it so let let's go back but anyways it's still useful now check that even if you have a full lock on you can still miss your shots because the enemy is changing trajectory and speed in the and altitude in the air it's way easier to land your shots on a static enemy Target and the lock on time for the Karasawa is very very short so let's change to the machine gun or one of the machine guns available available in the game and see how the same fire control system behaves without the lock on speed enabled so let's change um, the type of reticle the different weapons have is fixed for that type of weapon for example rifles have a, a standard reticle machine guns have wide and shallow reticles if you match the weapon reticle with the fire control system reticle, the size of the actual square increases. And that way it's easier to keep a lock on. Also, faster firing weapons have an easier time. They are lighter. They have a far easier time tracking or the arm of the mech has an easier time tracking the enemies and with some fire control system reticles you you don't even need to be looking at the enemy on the screen you just need to listen for the actual lock on uh, noise to know when to fire so let's change to a wide and shallow This means that the reticle doesn't give a lot of distance towards the enemy before getting a lock on. You have to get close to the enemy. 
And the advantage is going to be that your reticle is so big that it's almost impossible to miss. Even though you have to be like, look, I'm not even... I can't even see the enemy on a screen. But you can actually see your arm tracking the enemy. and predicting where it's going to be. And this is the real stuff about building a mech. You have to match your fire control system to, to the weapon you have equipped. Because, for example, the um, let's check another one. Like, this one's wide and shallow. This one is wide. So it's not to, it's not going to be a perfect rectangle or a perfect square. It's going to be a horizontal uh, rectangle. The tall one is the same but vertically. Engaging test mode. Like you see, since this is wide, it's even easier to keep track of the enemies without having to perform a lot of input motions on the controller. And, for example, this type of radical in the fire control system helps thread legs or the tank legs a lot because they have a more difficult time turning and boosting at the same time. So they can circle a strafe as easily as a bipedal or a quad leg. So what happens when you change your weapon type from a wide and shallow reticle which benefits from both a fire control system that has a wide and shallow reticle or just a wide reticle you change it to a weapon lock that it's type special it's shallow and deep it has a long of lock on range but the reticle is going to be vastly reduced. This is the sniper rifle for this game. The sniper rifles are not are powerful, but they are not a one-shot, one-kill. See, with a long-range weapon, you actually have to keep a long-range distance, but it's very difficult to keep the enemy inside your lock window or inside your reticle the advantage that the sniper rifle has is that it has a lot of kinetic energy so it can interrupt the lightweight course and it also helps it damages it punches through are more more easily but they are very it's a very difficult to use weapon because it doesn't benefit really from any fire control system the reticle is always going to be very very small and it's hard to keep track of the enemies that's why it is considered a high skill weapon because you have to overcome the shortcomings of the fire control system and even if you match the sniper rifle with a uh, narrow and deep fire control system which i think there is only one in the game like for example this is the standard Um, and the reticle is going to become very, very small. It, it's never going to be like the machine gun fire control system that gives you a very big square to play around. And in fact, um, having such a small reticle makes blading more difficult. 
Hence why it's a popular strategy to pair a wide and shallow or a wide um, fire control system reticle with swords because swords also keep track of the enemy. I personally don't like using a sniper rifle or long distance weapons. Um, the only advantage maybe is if you are using missile arms. So let's go check that out. Or a missile launcher that has multiple lock-ons. Like you pair a fire control system. This wide with six lock-ons and then you have to go look for a part. Missiles in Armored Core 1 are not very good. Like, for example... Okay, let's sell this one. And maybe this one. And the complex go because I don't need that. Okay, and now we buy a missile that actually has multi launch capability. Six lock ons, six missiles. So let's go with this. Okay, so now I have a fire control system that has, um, just let me change my weapon so I get a better, um, a better reticle. So on the right side of the core, in the back slot, I have a, a missile launcher that can lock on four times. And I have a fire control system that has six lock-ons. It's never going to shoot six missiles on the back side left side i have a missile launcher that launches six missiles maximum so one is going to be um more useful than the other ideally if you're using missiles you have to match the number of missiles that you can launch with the actual number of lock-ons that your fire control system has like i have six and six You can shoot on just one and you can shoot on just two. If you have the extension that auto launches the missiles on full lock on, it has to wait until you get the full lock on number. Like, for example, this is going to be four. And as soon as it gets the four lock ons, it's going to shoot. But using missiles also have um, its its trick. Like if you should um, check this out, the missiles are launched vertically first, and they and then they start tracking, and the other launcher has a different pattern. Every launcher in the game, in every Armored Core game, this one launches from below. So if I aim too high, the missile hits the ground. This one has a uh, faster flight for the missile. So it's easier to use. The other one is a slower. But for example, if the enemy is flying upwards, the missile that starts below has an easier time tracking upwards. And on the other hand, the missile that first launches vertically has an easier time pursuing targets that are falling down. 
and the, uh, there are also missiles that fire a straight forward and then start tracking. You have to take that into account when firing missiles. Uh, this game doesn't yet have the extra lock-on uh, or I don't recall what they're called, but there is um, a thing that you put on the shoulders of the mech that if you fire a missile, then that thing fires a couple of missiles too. And of course, there is also a stupidly overpowered, uh, but very, very heavy. Uh, so let me see, let's sell the red eye. And let's sell this thing. And then let's buy. I haven't grinded this yet. And it's not very expensive. This is super heavy. I don't think the mech I have built. can launch it or can use this. This is a single lock-on, for example. Uh, so the fire control system is not, is not going to help a lot. Uh, the thing with this is that it uses both back slots and then you have to be able to carry it. So, okay, something that is bipedal. No, well, let's go with quads. And there are also these. This is a single lock-on, but it fires multi-warhead missiles. So there's a projectile that is going to come out. And it's going to turn into a lot of mini missiles. Of course, since it hits very hard and it tracks very well. See, missiles are not very good in this game. Test mode. Uh, you will be um, having an easier time with a single lock-on fire control system because those usually have a shorter lock time. So let's change it, for example, to one of the fastest fire control systems in the game. This one. Which in, in this particular game is a uh, hidden, it's a hidden part. Uh, and like I told you in the other video, I think uh, this part changed name, changed the 3D model, but the performance is very similar. Like if you go and look in Armored Core 2, Armored Core 3, Armored Core 4, there is going to be a fire control system that is wide and shallow, has a maximum lock on of 2 has very reduced weight and has very little energy drain. And in this game is called the QX as fuck because it's quick as fuck. <laughs> Those from software guys have a sense of humor after all. Yeah, this is pretty much the best fire control system in the game. Unless you're using a missile boat. For example, this one has a fairly long lock on range. And it also has a very fast lock on. Now, let's go back and equip the optional part that gives you faster lock on times. That thing is in the assembly in optional parts. I think these menus are integrated differently 
in future games but the thing with optional parts like let's put the axle in let's take this out and put the automatic missile launcher and let's go for a ride now i don't have to worry about pressing the button for firing the missiles and this configuration of firing automatically is recommended for missile boats or just to keep the pressure in the pressure on on enemies at a distance like you're going up uh, the trick is trying to force the opponent into spending all of their energy trying to dodge the the missile range and then closing in with a normal weapon while they cannot move as fast or just go for the kill and blade in the air because blading in the air does more damage so well this is basically how the fire control systems work what different radicals do with different weapons um there is a, a best fire control system in armor core one and that's the quickest buck uh, there's a version of that one that also has one uh, that only has one lock on it's just slightly slower and a little bit heavier and consume just a bit more energy if you cannot find there's a ton of videos for doing that on on youtube uh, but if you can find the quick sex fuck then you can buy the other one it's around fifty thousand credits so it's not going to break bank it's uh, very light consumes uh, very few energy points and it's a wide and shallow type of radical which works well with most weapons and missile systems and that's uh, the part where i told you that in the future they will try to differentiate uh, the radicals a bit more and they will also give you equivalent versions of a standard radical with low energy consumption and low weight and faster uh, or a relatively fast target acquisition they will give you a long range not as fast but also lightweight uh, half how to speed target acquisition to make using snipers a bit easier and stuff like that these are the things that you have to test in your configurations because even so the quickest fog is the best fire control system in the game is not compatible with every play style it's compatible and works very well with most weapons but maybe it doesn't pair well with your playing style. For example, if you go um, pistol and blade and you need to be very fast, then a wise fire control system will be best for you, coupled with the slap to shorten the time of target acquisition. Okay? But now you have the basis to go play every other Armored Core game. They follow these same rules. Uh, that pairing the weapon with the same radical on the fire control system gives you a bigger radical to work with. And you have an easier time keeping track of your enemies. So if the video is helpful to you, and you like this series subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video click on that bell so you know when i upload a new material and see you around see you next time